Hello everybody, Jordan here, The PH is Silent. We're doing a DMs Guild review on Elminster's Candlekeep Companion. Uh, it has really good amounts of lore. I think it's something you could use for your Forgotten Realms game, but I really, really don't like the classes. If you wanna hear more, stay tuned. So good to have you guys here, thank you so much. And I want to remind you all that I don't really review things unless I like them. So uh, even though I dislike aspects of this, uh, overall I, I kind of like it. And if you're interested in it, you can click the link down below. It will take you to an affiliate link, uh, or it is an affiliate link rather. Um, a little bit comes back my way so I can buy more PDFs in the future. But full disclosure, this was gifted to me for review purposes. Uh, and so I, yeah, let's check it out. All right, so uh, here it is, Elminster's Candlekeep Companion on the DM's Guild. This will run you $15. Um, and it has uh, new classes. There is a Fantasy Grounds conversion. I just didn't know that, I saw that right there. That's kind of cool. Um, and has a new, uh, and I say new in with air quotes, uh, subclasses for Bard, Cleric, Monk, and Wizard. Ed Greenwood, the man himself, uh, was a consultant on this, so that's really cool. Diving in to Elminster's Candlekeep Companion, um, it's pretty straightforward. Speaking of forward, here we are. Um, we get into uh, the map of Candlekeep, which there isn't uh, an actual, there isn't a lot, which is weird. There's not really a map of Candlekeep, so this is, Crucial if you want to kind of run Candlekeep because we don't have one of these and it's sideways. I wish they would have formatted this a little bit better, but I think I can do control shift plus. Yes, and we can do that. Just, it's nice to see things. This is a really well-drawn map. I like things on the side here. You got the crest of Candlekeep. Um, you got all the different locations. This font's a little weird, but you know, you take what you get. What I like a lot is the subterranean stuff because Candlekeep is massive fortress. And then below in the volcanic rock that it's set on, there's a bunch of extra stuff down there, which is kind of cool. So we're gonna rotate this back um, and we're gonna go to the next page. Uh, which is the table of contents. So what are you getting in this uh, this package? You're getting a map of Candlekeep. You're getting how to use this book. Um, a brief history of Candlekeep that you can give to your players if they do like a lore knowledge, uh, uh, history check. That's what I'm thinking of. Chapter one is all of the subclasses, which are kind of subpar. I don't like any of them. Um, and then chapter two is stuff about Candlekeep, specifically downtime in Candlekeep using Xanathar's rules. Um, and then the great library um, and, and information on the library. There's some really good tables in there to roll randomly for books and things like that. Um, and then chapter four is some adventures. Uh, so side quests while they're at Candlekeep, et cetera. Um, specifically Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus Director's Cut is uh, in that adventure in D Descent to Avernus, you go to Candlekeep, this expands on that and you can use it for things. Magic items. I like a lot of the magic items and spells. Don't really like any of the spells that I read. Um, and then NPCs and monsters and things like that. So uh, we're gonna skip the welcome to Candlekeep and we're gonna dive into the character options. Um, now, I reached out to uh, one of the, the lead uh, designers of this supplement because I was really confused. I was talking with some of my players about the prophecy cleric and the lore wizard and things like that. And they were saying, well, that's in another like thing that I have. And I was like, what? And so we we went digging around and I ended up emailing him asking him like, what's the deal? But uh, some of the designers on this designed some homebrew stuff back in the day. That homebrew stuff eventually made it into a PDF sold on the DMs Guild for $15. It's called the Player's Companion. I have it right here. Um, and the Player's Companion came out in 2017, December of 2017. And then for Elminster's uh, Candlekeep Companion, they updated the class, but they reused a lot of the stuff and put it in here. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I think as a designer, you're trying to get a PDF to sell and not everyone's gonna buy the lore. I like the lore. As a dungeon master, I'm gonna find a lot of this PDF very useful. But if I was a player buying this, I would be very disappointed. Um, that being said, there are more players than there are DMs. So when you're creating content, creating content for players is probably always more profitable than creating content for this. 
uh, these classes feel very tacked on. I uh, go over them a little bit. Um, specifically, uh, we have the Bard College of Destiny. Its shtick is that you, your bardic inspiration can be foreseen. So when I hand the inspiration to somebody, I can roll it and be like, oh, out of a D8, I roll a seven. You now have a seven on your bardic inspiration. I, as a player who received bardic inspiration, can use that seven or I can roll. And it's copying the divination wizard, which I get. The divination wizard has uh, portent, but the cool thing about portent is a low roll or a high roll, those are both useful. Um, this one, a high roll is only useful. So you're really just kind of giving advantage with to your, your, your thing, uh, a delayed advantage. I either roll and I'm like, oh, it was a two. And then later on, somebody's like, well, I can probably roll better than a two, so I'll re-roll it. Or you roll a seven and they're like, well, I can't really roll higher than a seven easily. I'll take the seven. You're kind of just granting advantage and I don't really care for that. Um, it's other... Ability is using that to increase the AC of a, a fellow player. So if I give my my player inspiration, when they get attacked with their reaction, um, they can roll their die or take the seven that I foretold and uh, add that to my AC. But looking at the Bard class, if we go to the College of Valor, third level, you can use your ability to lower the attack made against you. You can, sorry, you can use the Bardic Inspiration to lower the attack. So it's the exact same thing. I'm either increasing my AC or I'm lowering his attack, but it has the same, like it's the same mechanic. You're just doing it in opposite directions. Um, and this is at third level. And I could also use uh, my Inspiration die to lower the damage that I got hit with. Um, and so this is, Combat Inspiration is profoundly better than what's in the uh, the bard in Elminster's Candlekeep, um, this virtue of uh, presence. And it's at a lower level. The Cleric Prophecy Domain. Uh, it has some uh, divination wizard things as well. As well. You see things in the future. Um, but what is interesting is uh, Oracle's Burden. Um, you're encouraged, not encouraged, you have to. You have to take one of these... Um, hindrances and also blessings and you don't get to mix and match them so you take like choked voice where you can't talk above a whisper um and you get to uh as a reaction i can add a d4 subtracting the number rolled from the target's attack roll so i can't speak above a whisper but i get this other cool ability um sightless vision i can't see uh in uh, dim light is considered darkness and bright light is considered dim light and I can't see very well. However, I have blind sight out to 30 feet. So it's like, okay, that's kind of cool. What I want them to do with this is to have one blessing and then a list of uh, hindrances that are specifically just for role play purposes. Um, this trying to give something bad and good at the same time. Uh, there are specific ones in here that if you are metagaming or you just want to have an effective character, you're going to choose that over this other stuff because there's stuff in here that you're not going to use. Uh, and again, this is in uh, the player's companion. So if we go to the player's companion and we go to, um, so here it is in player's companion, uh, the spells have changed. That's everything five or three and below. Um, but it's, it's the same thing. You get bonus cantrips uh, and then Oracle's burden. Uh, you can never speak louder than a whisper. Uh, you know, murky film covers your eyes. Uh, you know, and so they they just recycled this. Uh, withered hand and then um, specifically uh, withered hand is right here. Uh, monk way of the avowed is a cool idea to be a monk that is uh, works at Candlekeep who has to go on an adventure. This particular one is more about teleportation than... Uh, a lot of other stuff, but you get some spells like the Elementalist Monk uh, that are uh, library themed. So uh, comprehend languages, mending, things like that. And you can use key points for that. It's a cool idea. I just don't think it really works because it feels like they they painted in a vowed, like they painted over an existing monk subclass with a vowed flavoring in it. I don't just didn't 
do it for me. And then finally, the Wizard of Academic Lore, which is also in this player's companion. This is basically a revised version of Wizards of the Coast Unearthed Arcana playtest material from 2017. Um, and I found it here and it's called um, the Lore Mastery, Arcane Tradition Lore Mastery. And with Lore Mastery, you could change your spell type to a specific spell type, uh, damage type. So Fireball does fire damage. But with this, this uh, uh, Arcane Tradition, I could change that fire damage to like poison or I could change it to lightning or something. So it's kind of a, a really cool idea for me to uh, fire a lightning bolt, but instead of lightning, it's doing radiant damage. I like that. Um, this was never used because it was found to be a little too broken by Wizards of the Coast and stuff. So it's interesting that we find it here and they tried to fix it. So you can change your spell type, but only from its existing damage type to poison. So from something that like Radiant that does a really good amount of damage to poison that every everybody in their dog is resistant to. Resistant to. Then they add something called Dwemercraft, which is similar to uh, uh, Warlock's invocations. They're like sub things that you choose uh, from a list. And from that list, you could choose um, instead of poison, instead of converting my radiant damage to poison, I can convert it to cold or I could convert it to fire. So they're forcing you to pick which ones you want rather than just giving you the full gamut that they did in the playtest material. Um, and I, I just wouldn't play this. I don't, I don't like it. I would much rather play uh, a, a typical wizard. It just doesn't like the, the idea is there, but, but again, this is pretty much word for word in the player's companion, uh, which is the other PDF that I'm referencing written by some of the same people as this one. Chapter two is about the library fortress itself. And this is where I really start enjoying this, uh, this PDF, this supplement. Um, seekers are people that are allowed to go into Candlekeep. And it kind of tells you like, why are you here at Candlekeep? Because I have a D8 of reasons that I'm, I'm here. Do you have dark intentions? The monks are, how well do the monks guard the gates of Candlekeep? Um, you need a gift to obtain entry. What is my gift? Um, I'm scrolling all over the place. What is my gift? My gift is uh, a D10 and you roll. And so, yeah, I have a magically preserved calligraphy notebook belonging to Ralatef, the Netherese wizard who penned the illusionary script spell, like really cool stuff. And you can, I've got this to get in, kind of cool. Um, there are other methods of entry. And then finally locations in Candlekeep, because if I, I'm not gonna jump back to the map, maybe I'll put it on screen like over, over there. But uh, you have the court of air where you come in and then the emerald door and so, uh, the hearth, the house binder, house of rest, um, and the great library and all the various towers, um, lo transitive locations. I love it when PDFs do this or give me roll tables like this, because how do you get there? Well, let's roll randomly and, uh, you have to cross a door because there's all kinds of magic and portals and stuff within Candlekeep, I'm sure. And, um, using Xanathar's Guide to Everything downtime, you can do some, uh, research and this research is really fun because uh, you can do arcana, history, nature, religion, and then the outcome is you get some pieces of lore, but you also get a benefit. And these benefits uh, are temporary bonuses that last for a week for every point of intelligence you have. So if I've got a plus three modifier, I get this benefit for three weeks. And I like that a lot. It's not something that stays with you, but the time you spend at Candlekeep affected you enough that you left with some new skills for a little bit. Um, and whether that's magically or whether that is, you just kind of forget it, I'm not really sure. You can role play it out, you can figure it out, but I, I like that. So like Arcanist, you learn a cantrip. Um, Dabbler, you learn a new skill. Favored foe, you get a plus two bonus to damage rolls against a foe that you're studying. So you know how to get after them. Candlekeep will have an impression left on your players. And I think that's fun because they'll always remember when they had that clockwork companion for a little bit. Um, complications and rivals, these are also part of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Um, this is also, I like this a lot, becoming an avowed. Uh, this is good for creating NPCs, but it's also good for if your players wanted to start there or maybe a player died and we're picking up a new companion who is an avowed monk. Um, they don't necessarily have to be the monk class uh, you can be a wizard or a cleric and you be avowed as well. So you can use a lot of these uh, to hierarchy of the avowed and how did you get there and things like that and what's going on. So it's kind of cool. 
the great library. Um, there are a lot of books here and there's rules for all of these books and there's reading rooms and et cetera. Um, so obtaining knowledge, how do you get knowledge? How do you, how does a player utilize Candlekeep? Uh, this is the chapter for you, copying text, etc. cetera. Um, and then training manuals, which is kind of fun. They had, uh, if you spend 48 hours, a period of six days studying, you gain proficiency with the manual and it's kind of cool. Um, and then uh, where there's traps and then books of Candlekeep. So they, they have a D100 here for various books that you can find. So it's, I like this, roll randomly, what did you find? Um, What's fun about this is they incorporate real books. So the Sword Coast and the North, uh, 25 to 28 here, you actually get the information in Sword Coast Adventures Guide, the chapter two, uh, the Sword Coast and the North. And so you can hand that, like this is what you learned. This is the book you got while somebody else does stuff. Um, there are also, there's Volo's Guide to Monsters is in here. Uh, but then we also go back to other DMs Guild material. They reference other DMs Guild supplements in this supplement, such as Kalamshan Adventures Guide. Um, there's the Malady Codex and stuff. So it's really fun. If you are genuine about this and it's like, okay, you found this and, and you've bought some of these other ones, like the Kalamshan Adventures Guide, which I really do need to review as well because I like that one a lot. Um, you use that and, and here's, here's this PDF, has all this information for you. Um, so I like that a lot. Uh, I won't get into the adventures, but uh, they're, these are quests that you can do while at Candlekeep, involving Candlekeep. Uh, then we have magic items and spells. Love the magic items in this book. Do not like the spells. Um, the magic items are quirky. They all have a history, which is really fun. So when you find something, it isn't just a plus one sword. It has a reason for all of this. Um, and again, Blackstaff's book of a thousand spells. This is a DM's guide supplement that we are able to use uh, in this world. It is a book both on my shelf kind of a thing and a book in the game and that's fun for me. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, my favorite magic item here is the Egg of Death. Egg of Death, uh, this is a wondrous item, uncommon. Um, basically it's, a, it's an egg that came from a dragonborn sorcerer on a beer, which is the twin world of the world that we're on, Tyrell. This isn't. This isn't a fantasy world, Jordan. You live on Earth. Um, the Forgotten Realms is in Trill, but Trill has a sister world named Abir, uh, and this egg came from there. When you hatch this egg, um, an identical corpse of you falls out, and it's not magical in any way, and it's a really good way to like fake your death. And I like quirky magic items, and I also like disposable, usable magical items. So this is one and done, and, and that's fun. So I Egg of Death was really cool. There are other fun things. Uh, this one was good. The Rod of Flame Extinguishment. Uh, I like that. The spells, a lot of them were, I would use these for NPCs, but I wouldn't necessarily use these for players. But there are some fun spells that are library related, such as uh, transmutation cantrips to um, copy, copy books or uh, dictation spells that like, as we're having a conversation, everything's getting written down on parchment next to you. Um, and those are fun, but those aren't really necessarily useful for like, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use those if I was a wizard. Uh, maybe if I was starting as a wizard from Candlekeep and I wanted to flavor it and take some of these spells, um, nothing really jumped out at me as like, this is a really cool, awesome spell, but, uh, I'm sure you could get some use out of them. Fire Scythe was actually kind of cool because, uh, uh, we, we, I'm, I play a wizard, sorry. Um, uh, wizards don't get flame sword, I don't think. Um, only druids. So fire scythe could be something that, that's fun for you there. Um, a lot of like telling the future stuff uh, and, and things like that. Finally, we have the bestiary, which uh, monsters are monsters. I, I have so many monsters. I don't really need more monsters with, with creature codex and tome of foes and uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters. And I mean, all of these, I just, monsters are cool if they're, Give me NPCs. So uh, specifically, I don't really need a lot of these monsters, uh, but like some of them, I don't know, bookworm, swarm of books, like they're all library themed. That's kind of fun. Um, uh, Miram, the Sentinel Worm, this is a useful one. Uh, and actually this is kind of cool because I could have my players in my Rod of Seven Parts game, they're going to Kindle Keep. Maybe we utilize something like this, but challenge rating 22, it's gonna be kind of intense. Um, but then, uh, yeah, Bard of Dest, ooh, hi, sorry. Uh, Bard of Destiny, 
and uh, various other NPCs. I like this Avowed Preserver, uh, Lore Master Wizard. So these are these are useful for Jordan. Um, and and yeah, and that's it. If you're running a Forgotten Realms game, you want to take your people to Candlekeep. I really do recommend this. I think it's awesome. Is it worth? Um, is it worth fifteen dollars? That I don't know. Like I said, this was gifted to me. Um, personally, fifteen dollars is a lot for me, uh, especially if I'm not going to use the subclasses. But subclasses are in there. If you think you're going to use them, they could be really fun uh, for the right person, just not for Jordan. Uh, it is. It is what it is. Uh, I like the lore. It's really cool. Um, I like the random tables. I like the fun stuff. I like how it references other DMs Guild supplements. So there you go. Um, if you're interested in this, like I said, there is a link down below. It is an affiliate link. So a little bit comes back my way, which helps me buy more PDFs to uh, review and, and send out to you guys. And that'll be a lot of fun. If you are going to get this, let me know in the comments below. If you have a DMs Guild favorite uh, that you think I should review, let me know in the comments too. I would like to know what you guys are using that you enjoy, so maybe we can shine a spotlight on it in the community and, and get some attention to it, because that's kind of cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the review. Thank you so much for coming. Please like and subscribe. I make lore videos uh, a lot. I haven't recently, but I am back making lore videos and review videos. I would love for you to subscribe. Thank you again for watching. Uh, I hope you are safe, wash your hands, and be excellent to each other.